Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. This is the Krevel Extreme 2. I initially did a review of the Krevel Extreme, which has a rounded shovel head, but that shovel head wasn't properly heat treated and it bent as soon as I started using it as an e-tool. I took that video review down because it just wasn't doing anybody any good, especially since it was a manufacturing defect and not a design problem that resulted in that. But the manufacturer sent me their latest shovel head, which has a different design, which turns what was my Crevel Extreme into what is now the Crevel Extreme 2. I'm going to put this through some pretty ordinary tests for an e-tool, but in discussing things with the manufacturer, they encouraged me to challenge the Crevel head in ways that you really wouldn't expect a standard e-tool to be able to survive. Ways that you're not going to want to use this, this tool on a, an ordinary basis, but it goes to it should go to show how strong and how capable this is in a time of need. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. This is the original shovel head that I bent in my first review. Of course, the problem was that it wasn't properly heat treated. This shovel head is no longer available. Instead, the Crevel Extreme is now called the Crevel Extreme 2, coming with their X-Tac head. You can see there are significant differences, including the pointed trenching style shape and the reversing of the edges. The serration is now on the right side of the blade, giving you a better angle when you're chopping with the shovel head. The beefy locking collar now sits on a grade eight threaded rod that is welded to the hollow steel handle. The handle still wrapped with 15 feet of paracord. And it's the same forged hammerhead with a chisel pry bar on the other side. And of course, there's the infamous Z spike, which I found out has a practical purpose. That Z spike threads on into the hollow handle with an O-ring, ensuring anything that you store in a handle stays dry. Of course, if you store anything in the handle, you have to figure out how you're gonna get it out. It's a very deep, narrow handle. And as you use the shovel, everything tends to slide down to the bottom. So you need to keep that in mind when you decide what you're gonna put in the handle. The Crevel Extreme 2 has the same four positions as the Crevel Extreme. It's not locked in the closed position, which makes it very easy to deploy. It is primarily an e-tool, which means that you can lock it into a 90 degree position for entrenching but it also has a 45 degree angle bend for use as a grapple hook. Again, I am not gonna test that one out. In Japan, the hand can be used as a knife, but on a tomato, you need a crevel. Straight from the factory, the crevel is sharp enough to slice a tomato. That is knife edge sharp. Because of that you need to take special care when you're opening and closing the shovel head. The spear like shape of that shovel head allows it to cut right into the ground and slice through roots on its way down. You can actually hear the roots cutting in this clip. Unlike most e-tools the Crevel lacks any platform for you to put your foot to help you in digging. This is more than just for comfort. It also makes it a little bit harder to use your foot to control the direction of the shovel while you're pushing it into the ground. But overall, this wasn't such a bad shovel to use, especially with how sharp the blade is. And now for the moment of truth. This is the test that the original Crevel head that I had failed because it wasn't properly heat treated but that was a manufacturing defect. That aside, I still can tell that the shape of this shovel head is a lot better for entrenching than the original Crevel Extreme rounded head. And here I'm actually hitting rocks. You can hear me hitting the rocks and sure enough, the shovel head is not bending. Whew. Well, it did it. I gave that a workout and though the edge took a bit of a beating on rocks, I think that's a good sign that I wasn't babying this. I was driving it in there much harder than I did the original shovel head that I bent. And uh, 
there's nothing that I am seeing on this shovel head that I wouldn't expect to see on any other kind of shovel head. It's going to take dents if you hit rocks like that. Fantastic. I found the Crevel to be really good at splitting kindling. It was a little more difficult to get the right kind of hit on thicker logs for splitting, so you could do it. I found myself catching the adjustment hardware onto the log, which prevented the blade from finishing the split. But as you can see here, it makes quick work of the smaller stuff. It works so well for splitting roots and cutting kindling doesn't always work out so well for chopping trees. Using any normal angle that you would use with an axe on a downstroke, that blade would just skip right off of the tree. The way the edge is beveled, it makes it want to skip off of the tree. It doesn't want to bite. Pulling duty as an axe, though, is why the Crevel doesn't have those platforms on the back of the blade that would make digging with it a little bit easier. They would just get in the way of chopping. So you can see how the bevel is only on one side on the shovel, and it makes sense for a shovel, but as an axe or a hatchet, when you're coming into a tree like this, it makes it want to skip off. So you have to come in at a sharper angle than you expect in order to get the bite on the tree and to safely chop a tree down. But the edge held up and I was able to do it once I got used to how I needed to swing it. According to the manufacturer, the saw on the crevel is designed to cut branches one to two inches in diameter. Looking at the design of the saw, I knew I was gonna have a hard time. I was hoping it would do a better job than this, but I'm actually pushing a lot of pressure on that branch and it's just not cutting. Looking at the cut, you can see that it's really fuzzy and there isn't any sawdust on the ground below it. It's basically just breaking the fibers without cutting them and removing them. Looking at the saw teeth, you can see why. Instead of coming to a point, each tooth is nearly the full width of the saw blade. Those teeth just have no chance of cutting through wood. Let's compare this to the original multi-tool, the Swiss Army Knife. This is the backpacker model that I got in, gosh, 1982. And that saw is just making quick work of the same branch that gave the Crevel so much trouble. And this is why. This is a real saw blade. You can see that the teeth are very pointed and they are in alternating rows, which helps remove the material from the cutting area. This made a big pile of sawdust to prove it. In order to get the most out of the hammerhead and the chisel, you do need to take the shovel head off. And that requires tools, which is something you need to consider. That said, it actually works really well as a hammer, at least for me. You can see I already drove two nails into that board straight down, and I just wanted to show how this prying worked. There was a lot of flashing in the nail puller slot that'll break out, but that was pretty effective. It's a good enough hammer without the shovel head on, that I was able to drive a number of these staples. The pry bar is also a woodworking blade. Now you're basically gonna use it to shape wood in, in gross ways. Say you're notching logs for, for making a shelter or something like that. Of course, if you're gonna do really good fine work, this is the method that you're gonna use. The hammer face is not in line with the chisel, so you still wouldn't be using this for anything that requires fine detail. And here's the practical use for that Z spike. If you need to get through a cinder block wall, it does a handy job of it. Let's see how tough the shovel head is. <laughs> awesome. That was actually pretty cool. That was impressive. Of course there's some nicks in edge, but nothing you can't take out with the file. And none are worse than the ones that I got just from, from digging and trenching with the regular stones. So I would say that Crovel is vindicated. That is one tough shovel head. That is really impressive. 
I'd originally planned to destroy a crate with a pry bar just to show you how effective it is at prying, but that couldn't come close to this real world example of the Creville Extreme in use. A first responder sent me this photo of a DUI crash scene when he came upon it, the only tool that he had to start rescuing this person was the Crevel Extreme with the round shovel head. He used the round shovel head to pry the door open enough to get the pry bar in there and a 300 pound firefighter did the rest of the work. His experience pretty much sums up the Crevel Extreme and the Extreme 2. It's a pretty versatile tool that's pretty good at a lot of things. It would not be your pick if you have a job specific tool at hand, but carrying around task specific tools for all the different jobs that the Crevel can do isn't always an option. And that's where I think the Crevel Extreme 2 has its place. So overall, I'm impressed. You know, I can't say that you need a Crevel Extreme 2, but if you're watching this video, you probably have something in mind as far as how this might be able to help you. And I hope that I showed you what its capabilities are. There are some things that you do need to know uh, about the Crevel that, that might impact your decision. First thing is, this paracord that's wrapped on the handle keeps coming loose for me. Now I can sit there and tighten it down, but if I were to actually want to use this for any length of time, I'd probably take the paracord off and put some kind of other wrap or just go without any kind of wrap whatsoever because it's worse than having uh, a wrap when the wrap is loose. The other thing is there was a significant amount of flashing in the groove in the nail puller. It's not that big a deal. You'll see that occasionally on forged hammer heads with the cat's claw that you might get at Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. So you might have to take a file into that notch and get the flashing out so that you can use it as a good nail puller. One other hint, I don't drink, so I don't have uh, bottles to open. But <laughs> I've seen a few demonstrations of people trying to use this as a bottle opener. Don't be a moron. Hold the tool still and move the bottle and you're not gonna have any problems using this as a bottle opener. If you wanna learn more about the Crevel Extreme 2, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. It really helps me out. Be sure to click up here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool things like this Crevel Extreme 2. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.